We're now going to progress to some steps which are a bit more difficult. Ready, set, and begin. <laughs> It's important to understand what the 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. We're told on the IEEE beam forming document that this technology cooked your eyes like eggs in World War II. And you all need to understand these are military weapons. These are assault frequencies. If you garner nothing more than that, that's what you need to know. It's microwave radiation warfare. This is what this is. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the National Press Club Federal Communications Commission Chairman Tom Wheeler. It's an honor uh, to be here um, at the National Press Club. The first generation wireless 1G was voice. The second generation 2G allowed both talk and text third generation, 3G, the internet, in a limited way. And today's technology, 4G, completed that digital migration. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. This video is brought to you by the number 5 and the letter G. And pretty soon, everything else will be too. You must consider the whole part played by electricity in nature. Human beings cannot go on developing in the same way in an atmosphere permeated on all sides by electric currents and radiations. It has an influence on the whole development of man. This life of men in the midst of electricity, notably radiant electricity, will presently affect them in such a way that they will no longer be able to understand the news which they receive so rapidly. The effect is to damp down their intelligence. Such effects are already seen today. Even today, you can notice how people understand the things that come to them with far greater difficulty than they did a few decades ago. Rudolf Steiner, 1924. Rudolf Steiner noted that in 1924, since then our atmosphere has become far more permeated with electric waves of widely diverse types. There's no doubt now that electric waves, electromagnetic forces cause direct biological effects. There's thousands of peer-reviewed papers on this subject. There's no doubt about it, but what are these effects? How are they affecting us? What can we do about it? We're now at a stage where we're putting in what's called 5G, which is a special type of broadcast for high density information transfers. And it turns out that this is the same frequency bands that are used in crowd dispersal weaponry. joined the Royal Navy uh, in 1960 and I specialised in microwave warfare. Uh, radar, obviously, which uses microwave, but they don't just teach you radar, they teach you all about microwaves and other uses. So I understood about microwave warfare and how it can damage people, how it can harm people. The microwaves then were used as weapons, as they are today. It is a, a perfect stealth 
weapon. And when governments don't like a group of people, for instance, the, the ladies who protest at Greenham Common in England about the American missile base, they camped, they were microwaved. We microwaved Catholics in Northern Ireland to make them sick. Uh, it, it goes on all over the world. And it, it's a weapon that you don't know you're being targeted because the dose is very, very low, which is actually more dangerous than a high dose. It's very, very low and it may take a year or two, but you can, you can cause neurological damage and cancers with low-level microwaves. And you can make all your opponents sick. It, it's a perfect weapon for a government. Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. Their intention to rule rests with the annihilation of consciousness. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own game. Please understand, they are safe as long as they are not discovered. Keep us asleep, keep us selfish, keep us sedated. Yes, 5G will connect the internet of everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers requiring massive deployment of small cells. We won't wait for the standards. Now to make this work, five, the 5G build out is going to be very infrastructure intensive. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners, and that's damn important. The interconnected world of the future will be the result of decisions we must make today. issue before us today is Senate Bill 637 and Senate Bill 894, uh, the former by Senator Hume, the latter by Senator Knopf. We're going to invite the uh, first four witnesses in support of the legislation, and that would be John Jones with Sprint, David Lewis and Andy Emerson with AT&T, Neil Krevda with Verizon, and Frank Alcavetti Jr. with T-Mobile. So be straight with me. Is it true? It could be. No, well, come very, on. A, you know, There's very no few cases. Proof there at was all. an unfortunate really a incident out in situation. Iowa. Oh, Look, gentlemen, have. practice these words in front of the mirror. Although we are constantly exploring the subject, currently there is no direct evidence that links cell phone usage to brain cancer. I'm Sharon Goldberg. I'm an internal medicine physician. I've practiced medicine for 21 years, and my background is mostly academic, internal medicine, hospital-based, clinical research, and medical education. I'm a certified Microsoft Small Business Specialist. I've worked on Space Station designing the cabling system for the airlock module, where I was responsible for EMI, EMC analysis, which is electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compatibility. I am a professor in the Department of Epidemiology biostatistics and occupational health and I teach there both toxicology and health effects of electromagnetic radiation. My name is Daphne Tachover and I'm the founder of an organization called We Are the Evidence. Uh, we are an organization that represents the many adults and unfortunately many children who have become very sick from wireless technology radiation. There seems to be a couple false Easter eggs being put out there right now. I want to make sure we dispel that right off the gate. The effects of wireless on health scientifically are very, very clear. So it's always pushed back to the definition of an acceptable level of radiation. And that's what this is, by the way. This is about radiation. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. My name is Dr. Angie Kolbeck. I've been reviewing the studies showing the impacts of wireless radiation on our health, and there are now thousands of studies 
showing the following adverse health impacts to wireless radiation. Cancer, oxidative damage, DNA damage, DNA failure. Things like you know, memory, uh, dizziness, anxiety, brain fog. Headaches, nose blitz, cognitive problem, exhaustion. We have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure. Short and long-term memory loss, decreased attention spans, lower reaction times, um, even involuntary contractions of muscles causing misalignments of spines and jaws. Breast cancer, we suddenly have breast cancer in women who have no DNA predisposition. Disrupted immune function and change in stress proteins, reproductive and fertility effects. There are dozens and dozens of studies that show beyond any doubt what this uh, radiation is doing to our sperm. Now, if you take this, the, the cell phone out of your pocket, the sperm will recuperate within three to four months. What would not recuperate would be the damage to the DNA of the sperm. That is irreparable. The wife of the ex-governor of, of Indiana was diagnosed with glioblastoma. Same brain tumor Ted Kennedy had and John McCain had. Did you look at John McCain's car? This is a cell phone brain tumor. Um, LeBron James, one of our sports people, had a salivary gland tumor. That is another cell phone uh, uh, tumor. You didn't hear about it because immediately after that was discovered, he would pay, was paid by Samsung to become their spokesperson. We are seeing increases in, in brain tumors. Uh, we're seeing increases in Alzheimer's. We're seeing increases in uh, all of the neurotransmitter diseases, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, Parkinson's. These are all disease systems that are known to be associated with low-level energy exposures. We're talking about 24-7, around-the-clock exposure, whatever you are and your whole body. You never get away from it. And it seems from our studies that maybe your immune system can cope with it for a time, but it will deteriorate. Then the irradiation will definitely damage cells at a deeper level, and the question is what will then happen? These are out of peer-reviewed papers, so these are not just hypochondriacs thinking that they're doing it. We're having real problems with this. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. So 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. There is scientifically evidence that is so strong that you can be certain that the standards used by the FCC to manage health effects are wrong. We need to start measuring how much radiation are people being exposed to? Before we roll out 5G, there are four kinds of electromagnetic fields that we know are harmful to human health. So radio frequency radiation, magnetic fields, dirty electricity, and electric fields, okay? Our exposure, any given person, and all humans are affected by EMFs. What is our exposure in a, in a day? It's not one cell phone. It's cell phones, it's multiple wireless networks, it's smart meters, it's cell towers. It's this sandwich, and it all adds up. The data we're going to look at are all published science, testing results, or public standards. At the bottom end of the radiation scale of what's called power density, or signal strength, is the minimum level at which cell phones will work, which was found to be 0.2 billionths of a microwatt per centimeter squared. Pine needles were found to age prematurely at 0 .000027. At short-term exposures of 0 0.05, children aged 8 to 17 experienced headache, irritation, concentration difficulties, and behavioral problems. Point 0.1 is the bow biology or building biology guideline for extreme concern. 1.0 produced sperm DNA fragmentation and a decrease in sperm viability in vitro. Also at 1.0, the science shows the following bodily effects can occur. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, insomnia, chest pain, difficulty breathing, and indigestion. 2.5 saw altered calcium metabolism in heart muscle cells. 4.0, changes in the hippocampus affecting brain memory and learning. And at 6.0, DNA damage in cells. So where are smart meters on this list? Electrical Power Institute in December 2010 
measured a single ITRON smart meter with pulses up to 7.93 microwatts per centimeter squared. Our own testing indicated approximately 8.0 with one meter. These tests are at a close distance, approximately one foot away from the meter, but an infant's crib could be just as close on the other side of the wall where the meter or bank of meters are installed. Even though there are all these known health effects at levels far lower, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg see fit to set the standard at 9.5, and China, Poland, and Russia, 10.0. This is the same level at which behavior has been altered, producing reflexes of avoidance following 30-minute exposures. A room of 12 smart meters, very common and even a conservative number in an apartment building, tested at 19.8 microwatts per centimeter squared. This is hundreds of times higher than levels which clearly indicate harmful effects. So how can utilities and governments get away with forcing these devices on everyone? This is how. In Canada and the US and several other civilized countries, the safety limit is set at 600 to 1000 microwatts per centimeter squared. This so-called safety limit is literally tens of thousands of times higher than levels which are known to damage health according to peer-reviewed published science. Faster, better, more reliable internet. That's the promise of 5G technology, but there is also the peril. Health hazards associated with radio frequency, radio, fre radio, radio, radio frequency, frequency that is higher also and requires more transmitters and in antennas. The film you're about to see has no characters. If you spare a little of your imagination, it is a film to describe to you the effect of cymatic frequencies on matter.
But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way.